Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, general ages, this is not only episode number 70 of All Things Cleveland Cavaliers, but this is the finale for us, at least, on All Things Cleveland Cavaliers. Brandon Lewis, Joey Schneider here with you as always. And Joey, it is, it, I gotta admit to you, partner, it is like the last day of school today. Uh, it was weird all day knowing that today we're recording our final ATC. Yeah, uh, you know, if everyone out there listening, I ha- I've had COVID, so we didn't record last week, and uh, this is our final episode, our last hurrah, and uh, we're leaving for very different reasons, but uh, you know, we, we are leaving Believeland in very capable hands, and uh, you know, ATC will be, uh, ATC is gonna be going on. It's gonna be phenomenal. I'm sure whoever. Whoever's coming in to do it's going to do a bang-up job, knock it out of the park. And uh, kind of sad, but, you know, kind of a new beginning. The one thing I will say that I'm happy about, we are ending it on an even number. My OCD is not going to go nuts. Number <laughs> seven, number 70. A very, that is a, that is, that is number 70. And we could have just number. left it on 69 and made like the greatest show ever. But oh, you know. that would that would have been fantastic too. You know, I didn't even think of that. How dare you now? Now I'm broken inside. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, what? should we should we just stop the episode right now? <laughs> but no, the show must go on. We want to we want to finish it for you guys. Anyone who has listened to us, we really greatly appreciate it. We're gonna give you one more uh, one more episode full of uh, some calves talk, some some good memories and. And uh, that's that's going to be it. But Brandon, first and foremost, because I don't want this to be a sad episode. The Cleveland Cavaliers came back from a massive deficit last night against the Boston Celtics at home in overtime. Again, Cleveland Cavaliers seven and zero in overtime okay. this year. The 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 Celtics are uh, I think four four and seven or four something like six, that. I believe four and seven something like that. Yeah, yeah. I know they they've eleven overtimes and they, Jason Tatum did not play, so obviously no. you know everyone could talk whatever you want. That team is loaded, absolutely loaded. Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, they they traded for Mike Muscala, who you know, good lord, I did not realize how big uh Luke Cornett was. Yeah, he's a he is a monster, seven two. Not saying that he had a lot to do with it, but you know, Jalen Brown and I mean that team is just stacked top to bottom with really, really, really good players. But the Cavs got down. Jared Allen, I don't know what's going on with him. Did not have uh, a great night. Darius Garland, uh, just hasn't been shooting the ball right, but still dish. Still had seventeen points, twelve assists. Donovan, Donovan Mitchell, Mitchell. forty. Plus, I was a, is a, I don't know if it was 40 even or 40 plus, but he I know he had over, he had 40 or a little over 40. And just oh my god, when he threw down that dunk on Cornette, I oh, oh I mean, my goodness, yeah. I almost lost it. Um Evan Mobley playing like a man. I mean, that was Finally. big, big you know, he's been playing really well, yeah. you know, and I'm gonna say some stuff on here today. <laughs> You got uh, nothing to lose. Don't hold far. Got you can't nothing to lose. Now. Got nothing to lose. Yeah, but uh, just a, it, L- Lamar Stevens coming off the yeah. bench. That was Finally what won us some playing time. That was what won us the game. He had, I think, he had six offensive rebounds. Yeah, he had a lot of offensive rebounds. Key in ones the, too. Yeah, key offensive rebounds. I mean, he did commit the foul at the end of the game, which was my favorite thing of all time. This, I think, of every any Cavs game this year. This is my favorite Cavs moment was 0.8 seconds left on the clock in regulation. Grant Williams at the line for the Celtics. All he's got to do is make one. All he's got to do is make one and the game's basically the game's over. Yeah. And 
Donovan Mitchell trying to get into his head. I don't know what he said, but he was talking to him. And you see Grant Williams say, I'm going to make both. I'm going to make both. He said it three times. And then he missed both, both, setting the game into overtime. That was the greatest choke of all time. The fact that they got him saying that on oh yeah uh, on tv and then he misses both oh my god i mean you can't it doesn't get better than that and then the Cavs took over in overtime were able to win by four and just a you know a really good win come from behind you know oh you know again one of those wins where it's like you lost you lose to the hawks by 20 something so, and then you beat the celtics and so i i told you i know i know obviously we're previewing the game at boston instead of the game at home but i said if hey, you know this camp scene this year they're gonna lose to atlanta and oh, oh my back, and they will beat boston oh my god so okay this is actually the best time if we if we were ever going to step away, this was the best time to do it. Because let me, if you did not listen to last week's episode, go or the last episode recorded, episode 69, go and listen to it. Brandon said that we were going to, be, that we were going to beat, uh, or, or we were going to lose to Denver, yeah. and that we were going to lose to Atlanta. Atlanta, and that we were going to beat, beat Toronto, and then we were going to beat the, was it beat, beat the Celtics? Beat Boston, yeah. Beat Boston. Boston. And you said, you said that we were going to lose by five to to Denver and they get blown out by the Hawks. Yeah, we lost. You were wrong. We we lost by six to Denver. You almost nailed it exactly perfect. It it could not have been better. I remember looking it up, going, "I go, this son of a bitch is going to literally <laughs> nail this on the head for our last." <laughs> the last episode. I know we we recorded that Thursday night against Denver, and I think I said that they were gonna lose by five, and I was like, I'm gonna be right, I'm gonna be right, and then I think one free for the end, like put us down six. I was like, damn it! Oh my god! If you, I mean, it's still, I mean, I one point doesn't matter. The fact that like you nailed it, I'm like, oh no, I'm like, I think they got a good, yeah, you know, I, I, they got a good chance against Denver, and you know, it was they made it close, and then. I was like, they're gonna they're gonna blow beat the brakes off of Atlanta, and you're like, no, that that's the game they're they're gonna lose. That's the type of game I feel like they're gonna lose, and then they lose. I'm like, oh my god, and then they, <laughs> they come out and they like win. 80. They give up eighty in the first half to Atlanta. I'm like, you called it perfect. I mean, you're you're going out on a high note. So th- this game last night too, Joey, is another example of this Cavs team this year. Uh, again, obviously they they get behind against Boston. They were trailing pretty much the the whole night, uh, battling back. But last night was another example, just like the seventy one point game that number forty five put up earlier this year. Donovan Mitchell, this man in this regular season, has basically saved I don't know five or six Cavs games this year at least. Uh, off at, the top at, of my at, head, at, at least. least. I mean, there this dude. I don't know what it's been, but since the All Star break and really before, but really since the All Star break, you're seeing just the energy, the hustle. The I mean, some nights, and I hate to say this because I would have an indictment on the team, but some nights it looks like he's the only one that's really truly trying for all 48 minutes, uh, especially when he's out there on the court. Um, again, a, a really good, nice win for this team, a much needed victory after after what happened. You know, uh, the the previous game against Boston, where they played well in the first half, and then once again struggled on, on the road in the second half. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just been this team is a complete roller coaster, uh, and you kind of know, I think, what you're going to get out of this team, which is at home they're going to give you everything they got, and they got a great chance to win. And on the road, it really depends on if if they're knocking down shots. I mean, can we get freaking? You know the Knicks or the Philly to lose it. Every time we win, they win, and it's like every yeah, time we point. lose, they they lose. It's but, we're not gaining ground because every time we pull off some nice big win, so do they. And it, like I, I really thought Philly was going to lose last night, and then they came. They ended up winning. And it was frustrating. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think the Cavs are destined to be like a four or five seed. It it really feels like oh. that they. 
are kind of there. Like maybe they can move up to three if they get their walk, but I don't know. The Knicks are kind of nipping on their heels. Uh, I don't see a way this team ends up falling down to six or God forbid down to the seven. I don't think they collapse. Uh-huh. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. They do have one of the easiest schedules remaining uh, in the NBA. What I need to see this team do before the postseason is start stringing together some wins on the road. I mean, they, they would genuinely – feel like that when they're on the road, they, they can't shoot. Uh, and now, you know, Lamar Stevens played really well last night. Maybe JB finally decides to give Lamar Stevens legit minutes because that dude came in last night and played like a dog and gave the Cavs that energy. And they don't win the game last night if it wasn't for Lamar Stevens. Well, and that that's what the Cavs have been searching for all season is that right combination of who's going to come off the bench. You know, and early in the season, you know, Jetty was giving you – Really good minutes. And then he slowed down, just like he did last year. You know, and then Dean Wade, he's been a little inconsistent ever since he came back from the shoulder injury. And it just seems like, you know, the only move they made was signing Danny Green <clears throat> and getting rid of Kevin Love, yeah. which, you know, now I'm not complaining. I mean, the Heat are like, well, like one and four or two yeah. and two and five with, with Kevin Love. So it's not, I don't think he's making a huge impact down there, obviously, but you need to find at least three guys off the bench. And you know what? Karis LeVert, you look at his stat lines and it's so, they're just, they're very, they're very weird. Like last night, it was like seven points, six assists, eight rebounds, three blocks, three steals. And you're like, God, like that's, I mean, he's, he's, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not um, jumping out at you at first glance but then when you really look at it you're like well i guess i mean that's actually pretty he, he good there's a little bit of everything uh he was a lot of let me hear he's also inconsistent too very exactly very inconsistent but still you got to find you know three maybe four guys you know if that's if that's um um you know it's obviously rubio um probably probably rubio lavert and then you, you it's you're going to have to pick wade or stevens you're going to have to pick one yeah and I, I, wish, I I think depending I, on matchup, like if if you're facing a bigger front court, you probably go Wade. If you're facing a smaller, probably Stevens. I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, and you know, the thing is, honestly, I think you. I mean, I think there's minutes for Stevens anyway, just because you don't. Yeah. Stevens' defense is right there with the Coros. He, he comes in and scraps. He, I mean, and, and, yeah, I mean, and his defense is there with the Coros. Except, I think that's. I mean, Stevens is. I think is a, is a far more consistent three point shooter. Yeah, I, I was going to say. I think Stevens is basically a Coro with a better shot. I think I said this on the podcast earlier this year. And I he's mean, bigger. A, 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 a Coro, you know, for all the talk, you know, he was on a pretty good stretch there where he was knocking down the shot. Now recently, over the last couple of weeks, not so much again. So yeah, it's it's back to the inconsistency with this team because they. It's it's the one weakness of this team that, you know, I think Boston, you know, obviously I think last week uh, on Wednesday, Tatum and Brown both had big games. And it just kind of exposed the fact that that's the one weakness where the Cavs are in. They don't have a legitimate win. I, not, the thing that's killing me is how we were screaming at the top of our lungs, go get Cam Reddish. And look what he's doing out, uh, you know, in uh in – Portland right now. And I mean, not not to kill Danny Green, because I don't want to sound like a jerk here, but he really hasn't done anything. Since no, he's, he's, over. since he's came, I mean, I think he played one game where he played me, like meaningful minutes, like yeah. d- meaningful minutes during the game, didn't do much. There's some games where he doesn't play at all. So, yeah. And then uh, I've seen him come in in garbage time, hit a, you know, hit a three or two, and that's it. You know, Cam Reddish would have been the perfect person to take a flyer out on and see what he could have done. You know, really get that that stretch. You know, you know that or not stretch for, but that wing, that tall wing that we need. And but you know, Stevens could Stevens could fill that. You know, coming off the bench. So you know, who knows? We'll we'll see moving forward. But Stevens definitely, and he, this is not the first time he has provided that energy off the bench. He he seems to do it every time he comes in. He gives you meaningful minutes. You know, he might only play eight. Eight minutes, one game, 10 minutes, one game when he even gets a chance to play. But when he does, he does make an impact. And I think that's something JB's got to look at moving forward is that Stevens is someone you should play. Now, just to get this off my chest, you know, I love Jared Allen. I really do. I think 
Evan Mobley is a better player with Jared Allen off the floor. I can finally say that. Okay. Evan Mobley is 20 and 10, 25 and 10 when Jared Allen is not on the floor. I think that he takes on the role of not just the power forward, but it allows the Cavs to open up a little bit more to do yeah. some other things. I think that, you know, someone like Lamar Stevens is almost a better fit at power forward. And you can almost use Mobley as a stretch five because stretch you can five. really open the floor at that point. Cause it just seems to me when Jared Allen is not on the floor, Evan Mobley has massive games. And obviously that's going to happen because you know, yeah. Allen gets a ton of Allen and, and and Garland have good chemistry when it comes to the pick and rolls and um. But I just Evan Mobley, I think his next step in the NBA to become that generational talent that we have talked for two years about is going to come when Jared Allen is not on the on the Cavaliers. I'm I'm almost the only thing I'm worried about Mobley, and it's not so much in the future. It's just now is I need to see him grow a little bit of a body and get more strength because I don't know if playing some of the bigger fives if he can handle that for a full season. Well, yeah, I mean, but you could see that he's definitely put on a lot more weight this year than than he had last year. I'm giving I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, it took it took Giannis three to four years yeah. to to completely fill out. And I don't, you know, can Allen handle the bigger centers in the league? Man, I'll tell you what, when when you watch him beat and Jokic, it, it doesn't, I mean, the, those are obviously the top two, but I mean, we talk about J.A. like he's the top three center in the East. And again, I love J.A., but, yeah, but against the top two, specifically, he has struggled. And I'll tell you what, watching Mobley jump jump over Jokic because Jokic can't get off the floor. Watch, watching that the other night was like, okay, this legitimate. Uh, which is an interesting conversation. Like, do you dangle Allen to ne- in the offseason to try to get a legitimate wing? I, I mean, I, you know, and I think I think it's it's a possibility. I think right now you're locked a little bit. Um, you got Darius Garland's contract kicking in, but you did you you know you you did clear off, um, uh, Kevin Love. You're gonna clear off Dylan uh, Dylan Windler, Levert as well. You're gonna clear off. I think they're gonna try and resign Levert. I don't, and I don't, but I, I think Levert's number is gonna come down it's, from what he's making it's, now. It's not gonna be in that number. Um, it's just I would look in a in a different direction than than Levert unless if, you get him at a significant discount. Um, if, I think that Jared Allen on another team is gonna make whatever team that is a very good team. And this is not saying that oh, yeah, I, I, sure. I'm not I'm not saying I, I love want Jared to. Allen. I'm not saying I want to trade Jared Allen. If there's a way to make it work, that's absolutely what I would do first. And we have seen it work throughout the season. So this is obviously not saying, oh, you know, this is never going to work. I'm just saying that Ev- it seems like Evan Mobley has very good games when Jared Allen is not is either yeah. is not in the game or is is not playing his best, and he gets taken out. And so, but yes, I think that if you are going to break up that four. You know, the you know our core four, which would be Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, Allen. Allen is the one who you dangle because he's got a pretty a pretty friendly contract yeah. at only twenty million twenty million a year for a guy who we consider a top three center in the East. But the center that you Mobley can play center. You can then like you could put a Lamar Stevens at power forward. And you can then, you know, you know, but who do you go after? And I think that's the question is who, who could the Cavs realistically go after? That would be, you know, that, that would be there. Um, Boy, I don't know. I'm I'll, not going to. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, if, if Boston gets a woman really quickly, I call on Jalen Brown. I doubt they would do it, but I, I'd make a call and see if they, they would be willing to break up Brown and Tatum. Maybe, maybe you give them Jared Allen. I don't think they're going to break up Brown and Tatum and, and, and Allen. I mean, Allen would be good because you know I mean Horford, God knows how long he has left. Um, but they they still have Robert Williams. Yeah. The only problem with him is is he is he ever going to be healthy? Um, so I don't know. I think you would have to throw in a lot more. And maybe I, and it, the, and maybe you go out have. west. I don't know. Maybe the Clippers break up Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Maybe you call about Paul George. I mean that's a possibility. 
I mean, the guy who I want, who I who I would want, but it just doesn't make sense for them would be uh, Mikael Bridges from the Nets. Yeah. yeah. But but Mikael Bridges is going to command like three first round picks. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's dynamite player, but it's something the Cavs might look at in the future. And they also might say that we're absolutely crazy and that's never going to happen. But we do know one thing for sure. The Cavs need the Cavs need a wing. So that that has not changed from episode one to episode 70. The Cavs still need a wing. But Brandon, uh, switching gears here. I have uh, I have a question for you. Go ahead, sir. 70 episodes in 70 episodes, 70 episodes. What is one of your favorite moments that like just like sticks out to you the absolute most? Uh, I think our interview with, with Rafa was great. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think that was the first interview we did together. Uh, and, and we've had obviously, you know, plenty of other guys, but Rafa sticks out, I think just because, during that time, uh, we were still brand new to ATC, and I think we were only 10 or 11 episodes in. And so learning that and learning about the team and how excited this team was um, and just getting his perspective as a as a bilingual announcer for so many years on the Cavs' history, uh, that was a great moment. Uh, I think our first episode, is one mm-hmm. of our best still. Yeah. Uh I I think we we didn't really know each other yet. We didn't know each other's takes. We didn't know how comfortable we, we were gonna be together and we just came in and let it rip. Uh and I still remember pretty much everything we did on that show. And then I would say the the Donovan Mitchell trade show. Absolutely that show when we got Mitchell uh and I came in here and absolutely had probably the best intro in the history of Believe in Media, and I'm still holding myself to it. Uh, and we just absolutely killed it and had a phenomenal show. Uh, that, those that, are my top three. That was so, so the, the Mitchell episode is my number one <clears throat> just because that was, I was going, I, I don't, did that happen before or after I came back from vacation? That was, I think it was right yeah. before question. I think it was right before. Yeah. So we there was rumors that the Cavs were looking at something, you know, some you know, a trade, and I was going on vacation uh, to Hawaii, um, which was amazing. By the way, if you've never been to Hawaii out there, uh, go, go. It's it's a hundred percent worth it. You will create memories that you will remember forever. It is the most one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in my entire life, and I got to share that with my uh, my daughters and my wife. Um. But you kept, I remember you just kept, you kept ribbing me like, you're going to miss it. If the Cavs, whatever, whatever the Cavs going to do, you're going to miss it. And then the news drops like right before, like. It was like three days before or something well, like that. Yeah, yeah, like three days before I'm, I'm leaving, the Cavs get down to Mitchell. We're like, oh my God. And we went nuts. And, and, we had, and we didn't think it was Mitchell. I think we thought it was going to be like Bradley Beal or somebody. Maybe yeah, we, yeah we, we were talking. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked Bradley Beal a lot. And. We when we got Mitchell, then we learned who we gave up, and we were like, "Oh my god, like what a good trade!" You know, like marketing obviously is turning out to be. It would have been nice to keep marketing. <laughs> no, imagine, we need him right now. Can you imagine if we gave up a Coro? You know, of, I told people if Utah would have would have would have let us give up a Coro, and we would have kept marketing. Now that is a championship team. That would the be the deal I wanted. I would have pitched that to Utah. Would would the Cavs have even lost a game right now if we had marketed it at the three? Oh yeah, they they for sure would have lost games. I mean, it would have taken maybe time. maybe one. Let's be honest, their their coaching isn't great. Uh, but but they would have been better than where they are. It was still a great trade. I mean, Mitchell. I mean, it seems like he's been on the Cavs forever, and he's it? not yeah. even not even a whole year. Not, like six like months. Yeah, that was such a great episode because it was just like we got a you know not only is Darius Garland you know was he an All Star last year and he you know you know um, just terrific player and I still think he's a star this year. And we had Moby Mobley and Allen, and we didn't have to give any of those up. And we brought back a bona fide star in Mitchell. Yeah, we want to see the dynamic, and it's just it just turned out such a great episode. If you haven't listened to it, go back and listen. Uh, because it, was, it was, that was such a fun episode. We went absolutely nuts on that episode. Obviously, our first episode, iconic to me, just because 
you know what I'm gonna where I'm going here. We'll, Evan we'll, Mobley we'll, breakout player, baby. Evan Mobley for Brandon, his breakout player. The the third pick in the draft was his breakout player for the Cavaliers. Mine was Dylan Windler. Out there, like, oh, we're gonna go, we're going down the bench for breakout players. And he picks he picks Evan Mobley. You you you, you know, obviously you were right. So this, this year I make up for it because uh, Isaiah Mobley has had like five minutes of action. Yeah, but but realistically, I think you were just trying to make up for last year. <laughs> You're trying to even it out. Well, I think like, we all picked a Coro and so I was like, there's really nobody left. Let me try somebody else here. Could have said I was I, I originally I was gonna go with Stevens actually this year. I was gonna say I was gonna say Lamar Stevens or or Dean Wade. And then I, I was like, you know what? I think Akora with all the noise about how much better he's gotten. And he he has been better this year than he has in the last few the last two years. Um I wouldn't say breakout though, but uh that was a that was a that first episode was just so much fun, you know, just kind of getting to know each other, but it was just it was really good. And I think I've I don't know how many times I've referenced that because it was it's always been funny. And um the other episode, and I, I don't know what episode this was, but Brandon came in with a huge intro, just absolutely screaming at the top of his lungs, just <gasps> ladies and gentlemen and it just absolutely it blew out my my headphones and i'm like oh my god my ears are ringing i think the little blood came out and my headphones just completely blew i had to get a new pair of headphones and that was the best start to an episode i think we ever had brandon i i don't i think the cat it might have been the Cavs like just won a big game. It was a big game where they were st- still on the streak or something. Yeah, I can't remember. Around Thanksgiving, I think, and, or right before Christmas. Yeah, and I you know it was came, this year. You came in with this. It was no, it was this. Yeah, it was this season. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it was like I think it was around Thanksgiving, and he, and Brandon just comes in with this the biggest opening ever. We had to restart everything. I had to get a new pair of headphones because he just blew the brakes off of my 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 old pair. And it was it was epic. If there was any way that we could uh, go back and actually have that recorded, that was uh, that was awesome. But we've had so many more good moments, and it's you know it's hard. You you almost have to go through every single episode because we've had. Uh, so many episodes were just uh, dying laughing and uh, just a lot, we, of fun. a lot of fun. And it's when we first started doing this, we had you know, we'd send notes to each other. Well, what are we going to talk about? You know, we'll recap the games and then you know, preview these games, talk about who's been playing well and you know, what we where we see improvement. And I think maybe episode 40, we we're just like, you know what. And it just seemed like we had some notes, but then we just were like, let's just rip, let's just, you know, rip it yeah. and just, let's just talk and have fun. And, and, you know, we're, we're so grateful that the, the people that have listened have enjoyed it and, you know, have kept listening and, you know, we've had you know, up and ups and downs with, uh, with, you know, with, with viewership and, um, and downloads, but, you know, we've hit the highest of highs and some, some very lows, mm-hmm. but um, it's, it's always been a blast to do it with you, man. And, I couldn't think of a better partner to have. So this, you know, 70 episodes in, which is a lot. That's 70 weeks, you know, yeah. maybe. And we, think, we, and we have missed like one or, or two, but I think, you know, about 72 weeks then in total working together. Uh, and, and for me, you know, being the voice of this podcast for 69 of the 70 episodes, um, an, an incredible ride. I think Joey's been here for 66, maybe out of the 70. Um, just absolutely amazing and you know again we are waiting for different personal reasons it just happens that we are ended up waiting at the same time uh and you know just to the viewers out there we had thought about initially trying to finish out the season but just because of everything that's going on our personal lives we decided that it was best to uh move on now and pass it on for the new host of ATC, whoever they may well be, uh, and let them enjoy this playoff run this year, no matter how long it lasts. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this about the the Cavs in the playoffs. If if they get the if they end up with a fourth seed, I think they can do some damage. I think that they will at least win their first playoff series. I don't care who. Then I don't care if it's against the Knicks or the Heat. I think that if they get if they get home court, they're gonna win the the first playoff series. They absolutely at the, should. At the at the least, 
And I think I, I think if they do that, that conference is going to carry over, and you might see the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals. You know whether they can win that is a whole another story, but we've seen them beat very good teams, except Philly. Um, <laughs> just that Philly's our kryptonite, but you know Philly, what? The playoffs just, are Philly's kryptonite. So I was just going to say Philly seems to be our kryptonite. Um, but the Cavs are. I love football. You know I love the NFL. But I also love baseball. I love the MLB and I love I love 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 the NBA. I love everything Cleveland. I love the NFL as a whole as you know, I love the NBA as a whole. I like talking about all players, all teams. Same with the MLB, but I am a homer. Um yeah, I obviously as as you guys know and as I've mentioned and Brandon's mentioned he is an Eagles fan. So, you know, still grieving, still grieving. You'll be, you'll, you'll be there next year. Still just a monster team. Although we might get it. We, we might get hard. Uh, hard this road. is what I love the most about ATT. Our random football conversations in the middle of a it's camp going, podcast. it's going, but the point that I'm making the is, is the point that I'm making is that, you know, Cleveland is, always going to be behind whatever team is, you know, the, you know, is going to be behind all of their teams, whether it's the guardians or whether it's the Cavs, whether it's the Browns, um, Cleveland's always there to support, always there to show up and show out. Like they have every single night for every game this season and the Cavs, you know, near and dear to my heart, been a Cavs fan my entire life. I, you know, I remember watching the Cavs and, you know, I'm, I just turned 38. Um, and I remember watching the Cavs in like the late, you know, faint memories in the late '80s. You know, being four and five years old, you know, laying on the laying on the floor watching, you know, this Cavs team, and you know, to watch them go through the years and get LeBron and lose LeBron and then get LeBron again, win a championship, go on this rebuild, and now we're back, and it's just you, you know, and then and I've gotten to do that now with you know, I, you know, I was a young kid doing it with with my father and. You know, then you go through life and you grow up and now I'm doing it with my daughter and I had the opportunity to do this wonderful podcast that, you know, I'm thankful for that. I'll be thankful for forever, um, you know, for Kevin Sleds from, you know, owner of Believe in Media and got an opportunity to do it with with Brandon. Uh, just an amazing ride. And, you know, I can't wait to see what the future holds. Well said. I want to give a big shout out to everybody in Believe in Media. I was obviously, going to do that too. <laughs> obviously, you mentioned the great, great owner, Kevin Floods. Thank you, Kevin, for giving me my first big break in the uh, media industry. Thank you for trusting me with everything Believe in when it came to all the general manager duties and how to bring undone. Uh, big shout out to Guardians of the CLE, Mel, James. You guys have built podcast phenomenally it is one of the best guardians dare i say best baseball podcast uh out there right now you guys should, should totally check them out they're killing it every single month dean clarence brown's podcast listen fellas i feel bad for you because you gotta talk about the dumpster fire that can't be the cleveland browns occasionally <laughs> for that is, that is the cleveland browns that is the cleveland browns <laughs> for 52 weeks a year and you've been up and down and, and you know clarence has been for the ringer with two or three different oaths and they've talked about many different quarterbacks baker mayfield deshaun watson and everything else in between but you guys do a great job and you guys love our browns and obviously of course the good old dean mike pile driver uh i hope you never pile driver me because that will hurt like a you know what but you know me and joey we both all love uh, our professional wrestling i think you guys and and everybody at, at over ocw for giving us our professional wrestling content and all the high school interns and the marketing interns and J joe you'll run the high school managing over there marshawn everybody, powers marshawn powers uh, zach i mean you know everybody our interns we don't have enough time or you know really to mention all you guys there's so many people behind the scenes but we thank you very much and i know you know joey i know you feel the same way and i want you to say your piece too but we will miss you very much yeah i mean you know i, I think you, you just nailed everything on the head mel and james just absolutely you know especially mel early on 
you know, I was I was lucky enough to be on the Guardians of CLE and to see her preparation for every single podcast and what goes into it. You know, she's an absolute rock star. And that's that's why Guardians of the CLE is one of the top Guardians podcasts out there right now. And if you guys aren't listening, you absolutely should. Uh, you know, Clarence and, and Dean, you know, boy, is it hard to be a Browns fan, man. But, you know, they 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 do their they do the absolute best that they can with what they got. And you know Mike and Dean at, at the Pile Driver. I, obviously, I, I had an opportunity to be on on uh, the, uh, the the uh, the podcast the uh, the week after the Royal Rumble. And oh my god, just it that's such a fun podcast to listen to. Just you know Mike and Dean are so funny, and it's so fun. You know, and they have uh, guys like Paulie on, and um, just absolutely uh just incredibly fun podcast and everyone who is, you know, written everyone who's been from believe and has left and everyone who's here now, this, you know, the company's in very good hands and uh, it's sad, but it's also happy because it's a, uh, it's a new beginning. This isn't the last you've heard of uh, myself or Brandon. You can check out Brandon at Twitter. I believe it's a, uh, so is it be- it is uh, at real uh, underscore B or the show Twitter. For, for, for those of you that don't know, I have my own podcast called Friends World, and Joey is going to be on there next week. So uh, this isn't the last that you've heard of of uh, e- either one of us, but I'm still making content, and you know I'm sure we will both be on Guardians of the COE and other podcasts. We're not going away from Believing completely. No, and uh, follow me at Twitter, uh, goodfella underscore Joey. Um, you will get my, uh, the updates of where I will be, uh, in the coming months. I've got a lot of things, uh, got a lot of things in the fire, I'm not saying I'm going to be anywhere particularly, but, uh, this is not the last you've heard for, you've heard, not the last you've heard from me. And, uh, you know what? I think the, 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 the people that I want to thank the most is the people who have listened, you know, whether it's been one episode, whether it's been all 70 um, or whether you've, you know, one, one of the, you know, one of the 10 views that we get every week on, on YouTube, um, you know, whoever has, has listened to us. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It, this is, that's, what's made this so much fun. And, uh, Brandon, I think for the last time, there's only one thing, one, one thing left to do, buddy. And that is to let them know.